Hello, it's a pleasure to be here again. I haven't missed one single FDRS conference since the first one in 2009. <laughs> so today we're going to talk about the fascial network and pain in lipedema and Durkheim's. I'm going to just skip through this one. So the connective tissue surrounding your muscles, your nerves, your vessels, and your organs is called fascia. And research suggests that the fascial network is critical in tackling chronic pain and immune dysfunction. And the fascia is now known to be a source of pain, secondary to nerve pain, because there are receptors that are subject to pathological changes within the tissue and within the fascia. This is a picture of Freya, and Freya was a model of a real person that was carved. She is in Berlin, and I had the pleasure of seeing her last year when I was in Germany. Um, normally, when you see pictures in anatomy books, you just see the muscles, because they take away the fascia. They didn't know how important the fascia was. So fascia indicates, and I'm going to give you this description, a sheath, a sheet, or any number of other deceptual ag aggregations of connective tissue that forms beneath the skin to attach, enclose, separate muscles and other internal organs. And these sheets of white fibrous connective tissue, as you can see there, very strong, very flexible, and it keeps the muscles and the organs in place. It's the structure, it's like the structure of the building. Without that, the body wouldn't actually stay in place. And the fascia also plays a role in interpreting pain and increasing cellular efficiency throughout the body, and this helps with optimum health. And this is interesting. The fascia surrounds every muscle, nerve, organ, blood vessel, and yes, every lymphatic vessel. It's tough connective tissue. It's three-dimensional. It forms a three-dimensional web. And it's a very rich sensory organ. It has 250 nerve receptors. The skin has 200 million and the fascia has 250 million. And it restricts with trauma, with poor posture, with stress and with inflammation. And so with Durkheim's nodules and inflammation, this is what's happening. The fascia is restricting. And this puts excessive pressure on the nerves, the muscles, the blood vessels, the bones, and the organ, and creates pain and tension, and then helps uh, affects your health. And we know that emotional energy, and someone was talking about trauma earlier, emotional energy we have not released does get stuck in the tissues. Because fascia plays a role in interpreting pain and patients with connective tissue diseases have chronic inflammation and pain. They also express, experience stress and anxiety, and this creates mast cell activation and histamine release, and then more inflammation. And as Dr. Herb said, there are mast cells actually in the fascia. Well, we don't just talk about fascia. We talk about a fascial network, because there are networks, the front of the body, the back of the body, the sides, there are all these networks. And this was described as a network of interacting, interrelated, independent tissues forming a complex whole, all collaborating to perform a movement. Isn't our body fantastic? It's really amazing. And there are interconnections of fascial tissues with joint capsules, aponeurosis, tendons, ligaments, and interconnective tissue. This keeps the muscles and the organs in place. It's linked to the autonomic nervous system because it's inherently linked. There are sensory nerve endings in the extracellular matrix, and we're going to talk about that in a little while. And when there are restrictions in the tissue, that will impair communications with the nervous system. And inflammation, scars, and toxins cause adhesions in the fascia. And you can see how this ties in with the, the connective tissue diseases that we're working with. And again, to tell you that unresolved psycho-emotional conflict or trauma is stored in the fascia. And that emotional stress may influence what we call myofascial pain. This is fun. Um, I did a dissection class, and we actually got pieces of fiber and elastin and put them all together. And then I, we had a dissection to see the fascia. That was what the class was all about. 
So fascia is sheets of sticky, gloopy tissue. They have collagen fibers, which are very strong. They are elastin fibers, which are stretchy. There's hyaluronan, which is important for lubrication and gliding. And there are protegly proteoglycans, which are for cushioning. Fibroblasts, and then there's a new cell that was described by Carla Stecco called fascicytes. And they are secreted in the extracellular matrix. And again, it's rich in nerves. That extracellular matrix is where all the cells of the fascia are immersed. And it's made up of collagen, proteoglycans, glycosaminoglycans, elastin, fibronectin, and other glycoproteins. And they play an active involvement in the immune response. These are the layers of the fascia. We have the superficial fascia, and that's just below the skin. We call that the superficial ad, um, adipose tissue. Very rich sensory organ. Before it was thought that the superficial fascia really didn't do anything. But the studies are showing that there are so many sensory nerve endings there. Um, and in that area in the set, it's responsible for pressure and temperature regulation. There's certain nerves that do that, the Pacinian corpuscles. And then the deep fascia encases the muscles and the fiber, and we call this the deep adipose tissue. And that is responsible for proprioception. Proprioception, uh, it's our position in, in space. We know that patients with lipidema often have proprioception problems, and also for nociception, which is to sense pain. And pain symptoms are intensified by stress. We have to know and understand that. So it is important to do stress management techniques to help with that. The fascia is innervated by the sympathetic nervous system, which produces ischemic pain in the blood vessels. And that will affect posture and become a tremendous source both of physical and emotional pain. So we're gonna talk about these aspects of the fascial network. But I want to just repeat to you that fascia can be bound and restricted due to dysfunctional postures, injury, surgical scarring, inflammation, fibrosis, nodules, lipomas, or removal of lymph nodes. And fascial restrictions exert a tensile force which is unbelievable of 2,000 pounds per square inch, these fascial restrictions. And that creates pain and decreased muscle tone. And important for therapists to know and everybody, but when the fascia is restricted, lymphatic drainage slows down. And then the harmful cells and oxidative waste products can be, it takes longer for them to be removed from the tissue. And when the fascia is healthy and hydrated and unrestricted, lymph will move. When the fascia doesn't glide, it becomes trapped. And we think of sciatica, and there's, when the IT band is stuck, and there's stiffness, range of motion, and chronic back pain. Durkheim's patients often have problem in the SI joint and the lower back. Um, and that forms fibrosis and scar tissue. The superficial fascia has an innervation of nerves um, around all the blood vessels and adipocytes. And they're thin and large nerve fibers, and they're connected, connected to the autonomic nervous system, which will have a role in thermoregulation, extraception, and pain. The deep fascia is very, very important. And the major cell of the deep fascia is the fibroblast which secretes inflammatory cytokines, interleukin-6, NF-kappa-B, and it secretes immune cells, and this increases collagen in the, in, in the tissue. There's sensory neurons in there that register as pain, and the pain can be from increased nerve density sensitization and also chronic nociceptive stimulation. Fibrosis occurs, excessive amounts of fibrous connective tissue, and densification is when there's an den increase of density in the fascia. And this causes tissue scarring and dysfunction. Fascial fibrosis comes from chronic inflammation and trauma and surgery, aging too, and diabetes and, uh, affects the fibrous tissues. And there is an activation of fibroblasts and myofibroblasts. 
And the fibrosis, as you know, is when it produces excessive amounts of ex extracellular matrix proteins. And this leads to scarring and dysfunction and an inflammatory and immunological reaction. There is thought that dysregulation of the fascial tissues potentially could contribute to pathogenesis of Durkheim's disease, and I think we need much more research on that. Um, there is pain in the subcutaneous tissue, it's burning, but they also found in this study that there was increased fascial, there was a connection between increased fascial thickness and reduced um, flexibility in patients with chronic pain. Myofascial pain, this is a wonderful study. The fascia is a sensory nerve or organ, as I've been telling you, and they found that hyaluronan is a, the etiology of my, myofascial pain, and the hyaluron, hyaluronan is between the deep fascia and the muscle, and that is responsible for a lot of the pain together with the muscle moving. Um, there's something called myofascial pain syndrome, where this chronic pain disorder affects the fascia and causes inflammation. And they're saying that the fascia is the source of the pain and their trigger points. When I do my myofascial release, if I'm working on the neck, I actually could be treating something in the lower back because their nerve, um, it, it responds, corresponds to different areas. And how do we treat this inflammation and pain? And I'm gonna go quite quickly through this. Um, manual lymph drainage, clinical aromatherapy for the nerves and for the emotional pain and for the actual pain, myofascial release, an anti-inflammatory eating plan, and nature, absolutely being in nature and being calm and peaceful, and then surgical removal. We can use gua sha, foam roller, massage gun, lymphatic cupping, massage balls, and cold laser, as well as deep oscillation. We also need a multidisciplinary uh, approach to this pain management. We need a psychologist or a psychiatrist, a lymphedema therapist, myofascial therapist, a surgeon, and a nutritionist or a dietitian. In my opinion, that's the team that is needed. Manual lymph drainage, which I've been doing now for 40 years, helps remove inflammatory wastes, but it also blocks nociceptors and reduces pain and relieve stress. And then clinical aromatherapy, I'm a clinical aromatherapist. We have a lot of research behind this and we can use blends um, to help um, with, with the pain and the and inflammation. And we combine lymphatic massage, reflexology, myofascial and scar tissue massage. Myofascial release will result, get rid of fascial restrictions to remove unresolved trauma and help with trauma and help with the freeze response. Deep oscillation can also help to promote mobilization and help with fibrosis and the reduction of inflammation. Low level laser is amazing working on the fibrosis and working on the nodules. Um, it will help with tissue repair and the joints and the pain as well as the fascial pain. Whole body vibration reduces pain and inflammation. And then negative pressure used carefully, lymphatic cupping can break down scar restrictions and help with lymphatic flow. And essential oils can be used to help the flow of blood in the lymphatics through the fascia. Black pepper, grapefruit, angelica, and cypress are some of them. Um, and then there are oils that can be used for neuropathic pain. They help to block the pain. They are anti-inflammatory. Helichrysum, clove, peppermint, sweet birch, black pepper, blue cypress, and lavender. And also for stabbing pain, we can use lavender and St. John's wort, burning chamomile, aching marjoram, and joint pain, and muscle pain, and fat tissue pain. Copaba is a wonderful anti-inflammatory oil, and that together with ginger and ply and Roman chamomile can help the, the fat. We know that pain is connected with mental health, and so we really, really need to address that in all of the patients. And I propose that everybody goes every six months at least to be in nature. I was just on a boat in Mexico, and the one on the right, I was in um, 
uh, Tahiti overlooking the ocean, and that's very important that we connect with nature. And they're doing this in Japan, and they're going Shirin-yoku, and they go and found that the aromatic molecules coming from the forest will actually help to reduce stress and help with um, immune response, uh, increased immune response, and it's really wonderful. So look up, it's called forest bathing. And so in summary, the superficial fascia is a sensory organ, and the superficial network contributes to inflammation, nerve pain, and immune dysfunction. The deep fascia plays a role in fibrosis and pain. The fascia is now known to be a source of pain, secondary to nerve pain, and inflammation and fibrosis affects the fascial network and contributes to pain. And conservative and complementary methods of self-care are very important, addressing uh, psychological and emotional as well as physical. Aromatherapy plays a role in pain management and it me needs a multidisciplinary team. And lymph drainage, clinical aromatherapy can help with inflammation and pain. And give yourselves all a very, very big hug. You're all amazing. Thank you so much. I will. Thank you.